Welcome to a video that will show several counting problems. The goals of this video are to solve counting problems using the counting principle, permutations, and combinations. Let's take a look at the first question. A combination lot consists of three numbers from zero to thirty-nine. If there are no restrictions on the numbers, how many possible combinations are there? Since the combination consists of three different numbers, we can think of this as three independent events. And there are forty numbers from zero to thirty-nine, so there are forty ways to select the first number, forty ways to select the second, and forty ways to select the third. This product is equal to sixty-four thousand. So there are sixty-four thousand possible combinations for this lock. Now one thing I want to point out here is normally when we think of a combination, we think of the order not mattering, but in fact we do realize that when we have a combination lock, the order obviously is important. So maybe it should be called a permutation lock instead of a combination lock. Now we want to know how many ways can seven books be placed on a shelf? So we can think of the shelf as having seven slots, and we have to fill each of them. So there are seven choices for the first position. Once there's a book in this position, there's only six choices for the second five for the third and so on, all the way down to one choice. So this is equal to seven factorial, and seven factorial is equal to 5,040. Now we can also think of this as a permutation. We have the permutation of seven items taken seven at a time. Remember that would be n factorial, divided by n minus r factorial. That would be seven minus seven factorial. That would be seven factorial over zero factorial. Remember zero factorial is equal to one, so we would have seven factorial as we had above. Here you want to order a pizza. If you have a choice of five different toppings, how many different pizzas can be ordered? Now these problems can be tricky because, a lot of these problems can be tricky because of the wording. We have a choice of five toppings, but it doesn't say we have to put five toppings on each pizza. So we could select zero toppings for a cheese pizza, one topping, two toppings, three toppings, and so on, all the way up to five different toppings. And of course, the order in which that we select the toppings is not going to affect the type of pizza. So these will be combinations. So the number of ways we can order a pizza would be the combination of five items chosen zero at a time, that would be like the cheese pizza, plus combination of five items chosen one at a time, plus the combination of five items chosen two at a time, five items chosen three at a time, five items chosen four at a time, and then lastly we have the combination of five items chosen five at a time. So the sum of these combinations would be the total number of ways that we can order a pizza with a choice of up to five different toppings. So here we have five choose zero, plus five choose one, plus five choose two, plus five choose three, plus five choose four, plus five choose five. And we see that sum would be thirty-two possible ways to order a pizza when we have up to five choices of toppings. Okay, yeah, on this problem we want to know how many ways can we draw four cards from a deck of fifty-two cards. Well the order doesn't matter when we draw cards from a deck, it's still going to produce the same hand. So this would be a combination, we have fifty-two, choose four. And just to review, this would be fifty-two factorial divided by n minus r factorial. Fifty-two minus four would be forty-eight factorial, and then r factorial, which would be four factorial. So let's go ahead and do this one by hand. We'd have fifty-two times fifty-one times fifty. Now I'm going to stop here and write forty-eight factorial because I notice that it's going to simplify with forty-eight factorial in the denominator. But I will write out four factorial. So here we have forty-eight factorial simplifies out. That would be one. We could simplify a little bit more here if we wanted to, but I'm going to go ahead and just go to the calculator. There's our numerator. Now our denominator would be four factorial, which would be twenty-four. So we have two hundred seventy thousand seven hundred twenty-five. 
ways to draw four cards from a deck of 52 cards. Now the next couple of questions won't be quite as straightforward. Here we want to know how many ways five people can sit around a table. And this is different than if they were sitting in a line because in a line there's a front and a back, but if you have a circular but if you have a circular arrangement, there's not going to be a front and back of a line. So let's go ahead and model this by representing the people as A, B, C, D, E. And let's draw five positions at the table. One, two, three, four, and five. So of course one possible arrangement would be if A sat here, B, C, D, and E. So what's different here is if everyone moved one position in this direction, it would not produce another permutation or seating arrangements. So what we could do to figure this out is, is pick one person and have them stay in a fixed position. And if this person stays in a fixed position, then we could permute the other four individuals and it would create a different seating arrangement. So the way that we can determine a circular permutation is take the value of n, in this case five, subtract one, and then take the factorial of that. The number of ways to permute five people around a circular table would be four factorial. Of course, four factorial is four times three times two times one, which is equal to 24. So in general, the number of ways n objects can be permuted in a circle is n minus one factorial. Again, because if you fix the one person on the circle, it does in a way convert this back to a linear arrangement, it's just that we have one less person to consider because they're used as the reference point. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more. How many ways can five girls and two boys be arranged in a row without restriction? Well, that's a total of seven people. So again, there's a couple of ways to think of it. If we have seven positions in a row, seven choices for the first, six for the second, five for the third, all the way down to one for the last position. That's seven factorial. Or we could think of this as just seven permute seven. The result would be the same. We actually found seven factorial earlier on a previous problem and it was 5,040. And this last question gets a little more interesting. We want to arrange the boys and girls in a row, but the two boys must sit next to each other. So if we were to sketch out seven positions, to illustrate, let's just go ahead and say that the boys were going to sit here. Well, there's two boys, so the number of ways that we could permute them in these two seats would be, so that would be two factorial. The remaining five seats would be taken up by the girls, so that would be five factorial. Now this is a number of ways that we could permute these boys and girls if the boys sat next to each other and they were in these two seats, but they don't have to be in these two seats. So how many other seats can they sit in? Well, they could sit in these two seats, that'd be one way, or these two seats, that's two, or these two, that'd be three, or these two, that'd be four, or these two, that'd be five, and lastly, they could sit in these two, that would be six. So we have to take all of this and multiply it by six to consider the different pairs of seats that the two boys could sit in. So this would be six times two, times five factorial, 1,440. Ways for these five boys and two girls to be arranged in a row, given the two boys must sit next to each other. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.